Hi, I'm Peter Tragos, host of the Lawyer You Know podcast and YouTube channel. The saying goes, everyone hates lawyers until you need one. Well, I'm here when you need one to answer your questions and give you insight that you didn't know you needed. Along with my partners, Pete Sardis, the professor, who has a finance and business background, and George Tragos, my dad, and the conciliary, a criminal defense giant, we can answer any questions you have. Hey, Dirty Rick. All right, so I think I hit all the comments and the questions on Crumbly. So we are going to get to Sonny Balwani. Pete's coming in now. We are going to get a trial update. We are going to get some compare and contrast on Elizabeth Holmes. And then he's going to answer questions. What's up, Pete? Hey, how you doing? So jump in there. Here we go. All right. All right. So we're talking Sonny Balwani. Another trial update. It is Friday, March 25th. So a few days after Pete's last update. So things have happened in the trial um, we're going to give a recap of what happens up to today's date. Pete's told me an important witness has taken the stand, but I also want to get to a compare and contrast on Elizabeth Holmes. So if you haven't already, take a second to like the video and subscribe to our page to get all this content and to be able to get in the live chat to ask Pete questions about um, the Sonny Balwani, almost said the Elizabeth Holmes trial, the Sonny Balwani trial. So you can get in the chat and ask questions now. We'll scroll up and take those questions at the end. But first, Pete, why don't you give us a little update of what's happened the last couple of days? All right. Uh, the trial wound up starting a little bit later than we thought it was going to start because even though the judge had made a determination that there was going to be a lot of issues in selecting a jury, what he didn't expect was that Hulu was going to put out um, the dropout, which is the most recent um, Elizabeth Holmes, Theranos, Sonny Balwani uh, TV production. And I feel like the biggest one. Like as the biggest actors, it's probably going to oh, be yeah. the most watched. Oh, yeah. For sure. Part thing that's done something on their case. Yeah, there were always there were a bunch of what I call documentary type things, and they also did a podcast, a lot of stuff. But that was way back when. This all hit them literally the week before trial was supposed to start. So they had to add some additional discussion to uh, to, to the jury uh, questions. Come to find out, they only lost about two jurors that had indicated they'd seen the dropout. So to make a long story short, they got themselves a jury, and they were supposed to start the trial. And one of the jurors that they had picked winds up being exposed to someone that had COVID. So they waited a few days just to make sure the guy had a negative test and started on Wednesday as opposed to Monday. So that's pretty much, you know, the delay that happened. Beyond that. But what's happened since your last video? So you did a first trial update. Yeah. We kind of talked about that. What's happened? What witnesses really? have taken the stand? Um, what's kind of the succession going? Any um, reaction to the opening statements, anything like that? Yeah. I did the opening statements on the, the video, video, so you'll see that. But right. after the, the opening statements have happened, the I think the government is going to go kind of uh, lockstep in what they did with Elizabeth Holmes. But they put on uh, Erica Chung. And if you remember, Erica Chung is the whistleblower on the Elizabeth Holmes case. She worked in the lab, and she's the one that figured out that uh, the – how do I say it? That Theranos was using um, commercially available technology – to test blood samples that were good and that all the blood samples that they were testing on the actual Theranos machine were coming out as bad results, but the company just wasn't telling people. So she was the one that broke all this. Uh, most important witness, in my opinion, uh, in the Elizabeth Holmes trial and the first witness right out of the gate in the Sunny Ball one trial. Which usually that's an indication that they feel like she's an important witness because oh, yeah. we've talked about on the channel before and we've talked about when we try cases, a lot of the studies show Earlier in the trial is when juries make up their minds. Now, their minds can be changed and things can affect that, but opening statements can affect the jury's mind. The first couple witnesses. So they do try to front load most of the time in criminal cases. In civil cases, there are different ways to set it up. But in criminal cases, they do try to front load the witnesses. So that's what you think is happening. Absolutely. Here. And I think what they did was they picked a witness that they knew was very compelling in the Elizabeth Holmes trial. And in my opinion, just her testimony, apparently she broke down in the stand because one of the things that she testified to is, yeah, same stuff as in Elizabeth Holmes, you know, all the illegal things that we knew that they should have known that they were there. But she also specifically points out Sonny Balwani and says, and when they fired me and they walked me out of the building, all of the terrible things that Sonny Balwani did to her specifically and how he was very aggressive towards her and all the things that he did because he was front and center as they walked her out the door. So that, I think, is an important distinction between the Holmes and Bowani trial because, as we know from R. Kelly and a ton of the other trials, when you pile on and you try to make the defendant look like a bad guy, even if it has nothing to do with the criminal charges, because Sonny Bowani firing her and being mean to her has nothing to do with fraud. But it shows that he has 
then he is an important person in this company that is making decisions. Exactly. And it shows the kind of person he is and maybe why should the jury have sympathy on him if he doesn't have sympathy on people he's firing? And forget the sympathy. The fact is he is taking an active and participating in these decision make these decisions on the ground at the time when things are happening. And getting rid of the whistleblower. Absolutely. Yeah, that doesn't look <laughs> that doesn't help at but all. But again, anytime a prosecutor can make a defendant look like a bad yeah. guy, they're gonna take it. Absolutely. Um, any other witnesses? No, not so far. Okay. Truth be told, let me let me back up and say something different. I don't know because there is no other reporting that's happened other than Erica Chung at this point. So what we've gotten so far, and again, because it's in federal court, we're in Florida, it's in California, we're gonna get what we get when the yeah. updates happen. So that's what we've that's what we've heard so far. So a question did come in that I wanted to, to ask because one of the things I want to talk about is what did you what do you feel like is the difference between Holmes and Bawani so far? Uh, Dirty Rick is asking about yeah. like were the openings different? Did one feel like they had a better starting point when the when the testimony started? Um, and then also talk about how the atmosphere might be different. All right, great, great question. By the way, Dirty Rick, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the reality is when the Elizabeth Holmes trial started, the government's openings were substantially longer than what they were this time. The government's opening was about fifty minutes, give or take, which is really short compared to the long, much longer, couple hour opening statement they did on Elizabeth Holmes. This time, it was a lot more pinpointed. They basically said Elizabeth Holmes was, you know, the partner of Sonny Balwani. They were partners in business. They were partners personally, and they were partners in crime. So he really has fine-tuned that. The uh, opening for Balwani was actually longer than the opening statements were for the government, which is really odd because we don't normally see the defense take that big of a stance. The defense lawyers are absolutely honed in on the fact that everybody knows about this case. So they actually went out on the limb and said, look, and all the stuff that you've seen on the Elizabeth Holmes trial and all the stuff that you've heard, that has nothing to do with this trial here. Get that out of your minds right now. It's not evidence. Uh, beyond that, Elizabeth Holmes, there were lines of people outside of the courthouse waiting to get into this trial. They actually had to open additional rooms in the courthouse to cover the overflow of people that were, that were in there. They didn't have enough room in the courtroom. Sonny Balani had a couple of people show up and they were probably just reporters. So the entire atmosphere is far different. Frankly, the Sonny Balwani trial is more indicative of what a normal federal jury trial is as opposed to the Elizabeth Holmes trial. So there's not as much interest in it. I don't say. think there is at all. Okay. Why do you think that is? I think everybody's already seen it. They've already saw this movie. They watched it with Elizabeth Holmes. She is the one that's really gotten the most media attention. So Sonny Ball 1 is an afterthought. So I think a lot of people already know how this is going to play out because they've already seen, and I want to say it like this, seen the movie, meaning watched the Elizabeth Holmes trial. So they know what's going on. I also think there's more to, she's more of a Hollywood story because it's yeah. she's the wonder kid, of course. the college dropout. He's more of the normal rich yeah. guy that got involved in a startup. I think that could, could make a difference too. Um, so basically it's been openings and just been- uh, No more at this point. Okay. So, so what, did you get any information from Cross? Did they cross her? No, I haven't no gotten any information. Okay. Well, there was some cross-examination. The cross-examination basically was, well, so you didn't actually work for Sonny Balawani, did you? Well, no, but I worked for the company. And one of the big things is you were disgruntled. Why was I disgruntled? You actually wanted to work in a different lab than the lab you're working in. Yeah, sure, but who cares? I mean, I, when I actually got into the lab I wanted to be in, that's when I figured out all this stuff that was going on was fraudulent. It really was not a good uh, cross-examination. This was a painful witness for, for the defense. Do you think we'll see any surprise witnesses that we didn't see in Holmes? No, I don't. I really think, well, when we say surprise, I think every witness is on the witness list. All the same witnesses are listed for Holmes as, as, as listed in Barwani. I don't think we're going to see anybody different. I think the government's going to go lockstep right down the line. Why do you think they tried them separately? Well, they had to because the defendants became adverse to each other, meaning Elizabeth Holmes indicated that she was going to be pointing the finger at Sonny Balwani, that he had some uh, overbearing, domineering effect on her. So they could not try the cases together. So do you think that that is because of that? Do you think it's going to make the government's job harder to convict Balwani in addition to Elizabeth Holmes? No, I think, frankly, that they have enough from the old trial that they're going to pick and choose. I think this trial is going to be shorter. I think it's going to be shorter because they already know what the testimony looks like and they can cut and paste, you know, for lack of a better term, exactly what they need just to focus on Sonny Balwani. Are the charges the same? Or Identical. Okay. 
So, and did they keep the charges she was not guilty of? Yes. So they're still going to try Absolutely. to charge him with those. Okay. What's the What's the loss? I get know? it. I just I just didn't know. I think it'd be interesting. Um, so in the Sunny Balwani trial, because because I'm thinking she has been the face most of the time, sure, and she is the name most people know. These juries, if they these jurors, if they've ever heard of anything, they would have heard her first, sure. then him. Right. How can the defense kind of use that in their favor? to try to get the jury to at least think maybe maybe they do have a reasonable doubt that he was in such control as opposed to he got duped just like everyone else. At this point, their job is going to have to be to punch holes in the government's witnesses to be able to demonstrate that all the information coming out was known by Elizabeth Holmes. And do you have any evidence that Sonny Balwani actually knew this? That's their clinch. Problem is, the government already knows that answer because they are going to pick and choose the witnesses, the really big witness that actually had personal contact with Sonny Balwani or were involved with him enough to, to recognize that he had some authority and knew what was going on. For example, Chung is the best one. She told them that this was a problem and they fired her and they literally walked her out and Sonny Balwani did it. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be tough for him, but I do think that's what I would try to do. I would, I would If I was him, I'd be like, kind of what we talked about. I wouldn't have put this much money in something if I thought it was a fraud. True. Uh, do you think that's why? I think he is. I think he has to. I think he's got no choice. Yeah, I think he has to. So I think he's going to say, I wouldn't have put this much money in if I thought it was a fraud. Um, I am super rich. Yep. I did not need this. Right. I got duped just like her. Now, for her, this was her claim to fame. Yep. This was her come up. This is all she had. So it's understandable why she would risk it all for this. Right. Not as understandable why he would risk it all for right. this. Right. Until the point where he is vested in it, that he's got $10 million of loan money and $5 million in equity. And then he realizes this isn't getting better. So we got to figure out something to free me to get my money back. I get it. And that's what, that's what your thought process is. And that's what the government's right. got to do is – They've got to prove that he did find out it was a fraud and kept perpetuating that fraud. Correct. Um, but but from my perspective, I'm saying if we're representing yeah, him, for sure, that's what it's got to be. It's got to be. Look, what a what a smart person. Mm -hmm. You could easily say this guy's a smart businessman. Would he really invest as much time and money in something that that he knew was a fraud, or just like the generals and all these rich people that Elizabeth Holmes tricked? Did she trick him too? Mm -hmm. She did trick him too. She's the bad one. She's already been convicted. It's all on her. Right. That's what I think you got to do if you represent. And that's what their opening statement was. The opening statement was basically, look, here's a guy that had a $100 million company. He's worth multiple millions of dollars. He doesn't need this. If he thinks it's a fraud, he just keeps on being a rich guy. Why are you risking going to prison of course. for a couple more bucks when you of already course. have $100 million? Yeah, it doesn't make much sense. So that's the trial update, kind of the differences in it. Let's get to some of the comments. Mr. Turn Up the Party. We posted the link. Go get one. Steve She, I like Pete a lot. I would love him to do more videos than just Thernos. What's going on with Aiden Fucci? You were doing that one too. Is nothing happening? Nothing. Do you remember Literally, that case? I know exactly what yeah. we're talking about. Aiden is the kid that killed, well, allegedly had killed, killed the his young girlfriend. girl. Right. Yeah, or no, it wasn't his girlfriend. Well, she was a young girl up in, in uh, Jacksonville. I have heard nothing about this. The hard part about it is because he's still a minor, even though they're charging him in adult court. The big problem he has, they're making a. Um, in, uh, that he's insane okay. argument. Yeah. So oh, yeah. That he just the, takes the video forever. of him looking up into the. Yeah. Right. Pete's also doing that one. And people agree. Pete rocks. I agree. The professor that's from the intro. Let us know in the comments of this video if you're watching it later. If you have cases you think would be right for Pete, put them in the comments. And if we get enough interest, that's what drives every video we do. And most people are interested in Sonny Balwani and Theranos. Yeah. So that's well, what he digs into the most. Um, Diana, I'm going to agree with you. Erica Chung is just a very normal, smart gal. Just so you know, apparently uh, from the uh, getting this from, from the Hulu uh, miniseries, she grew up in a trailer with like six or seven of her family members. And she's the first one to go to college in her family. And she she really has worked hard to succeed. So I think that from her perspective, she's about as as likable as a, as a personality as you could have. And that's why I think she's so painful, uh, because when they put her up there, she's self-made, smart, and hasn't defrauded anybody. All right, Spiley, will she testify in this trial? Doubtful. Yeah, real doubtful. She, she's a, what we call an adverse witness yeah. at this point. The only way Elizabeth Holmes testifies is if they make a deal uh, with the prosecution. But I'll tell you, why would they do that? At this point, they've got convictions. The appeals are, you know, we talk about the percentage of the chance of winning on appeal. It's not that great. Um. 
Listrin saying my bio dad didn't know anything about Elizabeth Holmes till a week ago when I explained it to him. Bodie, who's here all the time, said he hasn't heard of it either. Take a second to go to our page. If you have, if you're really bored and you have lots of hours to waste, or just randomly one one night want to binge stuff, Pete did a breakdown basically every week during the Elizabeth Holmes trial. Yeah. Um, a bunch of stuff on post trial motions, on sentencing, on where she'd be in prison. Oh yeah, I can put you to sleep for <laughs> weeks. You have problems sleeping? I got you. But everything you'd want to know about that case. And then he's also done some prep stuff before the Balwani trial, and he'll be doing weekly updates on the Balwani trial. So no excuse not to get in on it now if you're interested now. It's a little different than some of the other cases we follow where they're heinous crimes, um, but it's a really interesting white-collar crime um, to dig into. Dirty Rick, is she going to testify against him or no due to, due to her appeals? I don't think they're going to call her. No, they're not going to call her. They don't need to call her. And at this point, because she's going to appeal, there's no doubt about it. Um, I expect that she's going to keep her mouth shut because anything she, she says is something that A, can be held against her at sentencing and B, is going to be something that happens on the record so they can use it against her if she happens to get a new trial. Do you think he will testify from time? Yes, absolutely. I think he's got he her choice. Um, jurors are removed for having watched the dropout of Red mm -hmm. Bad Blood who oversees the presiding judge from doing the same and thereby rule in favor of the prosecution. Who oversees that judge? So I'll let Pete answer it, but I want you to remember in the Kyle Rittenhouse case, Judge Schroeder was literally making comments about what the media was saying, what was happening in the media, seeing articles or videos, and commenting on it in court. So go ahead. All right. First of all, federal district court judges are appointed for life, so nobody watches. Nobody oversees them for anything. Nothing. They do whatever they want. But at the end of the day, the judge is not the trier of fact. So, you know, it doesn't matter if he's watching the, uh, you know, between you and me, I don't think he's watching anything. He's gotten more uh, Theranos, Elizabeth Holmes, Balwani story than he ever, ever wanted to deal with. So I'm, I'm sure he's not even involved in any of that stuff. Because again, federal district court judges are pretty honorable people. That being said, um, he is, Judge DeVilla is far more uh, close to the vest. He does not kind of spout out of the mouth. He doesn't like the publicity. Uh, so he is, I think, doing a decent job of just making sure Balwani gets the fairest trial can, which is why he got together with the lawyers and they put together a very customized jury questionnaire recognizing all this media attention exists. So Listron said, Caroline, the judge should recuse himself if that's the case. If they don't, defense can request them to be recused. So it's, I, I, I think that the defense can request them to be recused. There's a couple things here. I don't think that that would be outright recusal, uh, no. a, a forced recusal, or I shall be recused for the judge if they did see it. But most judges, especially federal court judges, live above reproach. It is not a surprise that this documentary was coming out. I'm sure there were motions letting the court know. Um, it was not a surprise that this judge was going to be presiding over this case. They've been presiding over it for a long time. So I would be shocked if they did watch it. Um, so I, I just think they would have made those decisions long ago. It's not like, oopsie, this sounds like a good show. Yeah. I'm going to turn this on and watch it. They have an idea of what their high profile cases are. They're not going to do that. Um, okay. Ugly kid. Joe has got a good point here. Why risk conviction? If you're already rich greed, he wanted his wealth to go up exponentially. It's the nature of the beast. And that I think is the prosecution's basic closing argument. And Bodie, good point. Nobody asked the judge, so how would the judge know? The lawyers can ask the judge. It's something they can't ask the judge. Uh, let's see. Dirty Rick, Pete, want to answer this one? We're going to get any updates on the new dropout series. Yes, of the episodes. Yes, we are. Actually, have episode six in the queue to record, so we should be seeing that next week. Early next week, we'll post the reaction to the most recent episode. How many more are there? I don't know. It's a good question. Is so we're going we're gonna to do nine. one for every episode. Yeah. I, I shouldn't say we. Pete's going to do one for every episode, a reaction of it, and then probably a summary of the whole season after that's over. So if you have questions about the episode specifically, go into the individual episode videos, ask the questions in the comments, because when he does his summary, that's when he's really going to be able to get into a lot of the comments and answer a lot of the questions that you guys have across all of the episodes. Okay. So I think that's going to conclude our discussion on the Sunny Balwani trial on Theranos on Elizabeth Holmes. And we'll transition now for about 10 minutes into an AMA portion. Ask me, ask us anything. Um, yeah, press the like button and subscribe while we have a minute. Thank you, Tanya. 
Um, we're going to transition into kind of the open. You can ask us questions. Pete's here too. If you want to ask him any questions about life, school, MBA, law school, MBA, JD program at the same time, school up north, transferring law schools. He's got a lot of kind of a diverse experience um, with all that stuff. So you can ask him questions in the chat as well. Make sure you subscribe to our page because that's the only people that are getting in the live chat uh, on this video and probably future videos are only going to be people that are actually subscribed to the page. Um, so we'll transition to that. But don't forget that at five o'clock today, at the end of this live, right after, we're going to roll into our interview. I don't know if I told you I did this interview with Crystal Vera, who was one of the public defenders on the channel Chandler Halverson trial, the kid that was convicted of murdering and chopping up his parents and hiding their body parts all over the place. Um, so she came on, she talked about that case. She talked about dealing with difficult clients. She talked about dealing with clients, um, that the world hates before the trial even starts and how that can kind of affect it and how it's difficult, how she is involved in the appellate process because we know appeals are coming. We know an ineffective assistance of counsel claim is coming. She talks about how the PD's office handles appeals. It's a really cool interview. Um, we go into depth and she gets to try to confront some misconceptions of being a public defender and what it's like. And she commented during the trial that she watched YouTube videos read the comments, how nasty they were, and how that was a mistake, which we all understand. The comments on our own videos are nasty. I can't imagine right. what so, they're like on somebody else's, right? Listen, public defender is the most thankless job in the world. And that's basically what she said. And and we agreed that there are good public defenders, there are bad public defenders. Sure. You know, and it's just like private lawyers. There are good ones, there are bad ones. Um, the only difference is they're constrained by the required, by what resources they're given based on the government nickel. Exactly. All right, let's hit some of these questions. What do you think Ethan Crumley's parents' lawyer conflict of interest? That's a difficult question to kind of understand what you're asking. I do think the lawyer has a conflict of interest. I do want to hear more about it and kind of read the motion, which I haven't. But the lawyer representing them both and doing things for them both, um, to me, it seems like at this point the lawyer does have a conflict of interest, but I really want to read the motion because that could kind of let us get behind the scenes like we saw in the R. Kelly motion about the fact that his lawyer has a conflict, even though I do think it was waived um, for R. Kelly. Tanya, speaking of R. Kelly, asked, am I going to go over the response from the government that came out this week? I have not seen it yet. If you have it, email it into us um, or we can look it up and we'll look into it. I will look into that response and potentially do a reaction on that. Um, yeah, music is magic. I feel so sad people were meaner. They were brutal to her and listen if you want to disagree with her trial strategy or think they could have done something that they didn't do first off most of the people making those comments aren't lawyers so they wouldn't understand how it is and almost all of them are not lawyers in her jurisdiction and, and didn't follow the pre-trial uh, motion because we know sometimes we want to blend a thing that they tell us we can't free trial that we wouldn't be privy to there are rules yeah so as you watch in our video please be nice in the comments to her feel free to ask her questions i can have her on again um, she enjoyed it and she said she'd be available potentially in the future as well. Do you both do editing of the videos? How have you both enjoyed this new YouTube journey? So the answer is no. We have a social media marketing coordinator here that does all of our social media marketing and other things. And she edits all of our YouTube videos. She takes the live video and clips out the clips and makes the videos that, that are going to come out at the beginning of next week that we clip out from this. She does a great job. She's great to work with. She's about 10 years younger than me and 20 years younger than Pete, which is nice. Uh, her finger on the pulse a little bit more than, yeah. than we are, but no, she's a big help. How have you liked the YouTube journey? Listen, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I didn't realize how much effort is involved in actually doing this stuff. Uh, you guys all see the finished product, especially for mine, because I don't do a lot of lives. Everything that I do is recorded. But you don't understand sometimes what, you know, the research that went to it, the, you know, the figuring out what the timeline, the outlines are going to look like, recording it, realizing that you're rambling, stopping, doing it over again. So it, it is a lot of fun, but it is a lot of work, too. Here's a good one from Steve Sheev. How would you rate the judicial system on the whole as a defense attorney? So we'll talk criminal justice okay. system because we do both civil and criminal. So since you said defense attorney, we're a civil plaintiff's lawyer. So we'll stick to criminal for this question. I, I'm asking for a letter grade like A, B, C, D, or F, okay. um, federal or state, both the same fairness-wise. You can go ahead and start. 
I'll tell you, compared to what is the question, Steve? Compared to other legal systems throughout the world, A plus, no A plus questions plus. asked. Uh, in China, they actually charge your family for the bullet they used to shoot you with. So that's the kind of stuff that you know you see in other countries. Um, I don't think there's a better but, way okay, to do this. Let's compare it to Utopia and the All perfect right. judicial system because it's not an A there. Well, listen, if, it, if it's the perfect world where, you know, people don't lie, cheat, and steal, people actually work hard and don't cut corners, well, of course, if, you know, if money was no object and you could just spend a fortune on every defense, it would be better. But at the end of the day, you know, you I would really say, get a pretty fair shake, especially in federal court. I would say a B is what okay. I would give it. I think it's really, really good, but room for improvement, right? Sure. I mean, that, that's okay. kind of where I would be on the grading scale because – Prosecutors have too much power, in my opinion, and you can't force them to just answer your phone calls mm -hmm. and delayed justice happens all the time because yep. um, they just don't pick up the phone and they're just not calling you back. Judges don't hold people's feet to the fire enough and cases take too long. Um, perjury is not taken seriously enough, in Absolutely. my opinion, where you just have people saying something that's opposite to their deposition that was also sworn testimony and it totally changes the case. And we say there's third degree felony. You could be seeing five years in prison for lying. But nobody cares and it's never prosecuted. And I think that's a problem. Um, I think minimum mandatory sentences are problematic because I think every case is a case by case basis and you have to take it specifically. And all of the things surrounding that, you have to see how each case, like Pete went through the sentencing guidelines for Elizabeth Holmes. That's just kind of a good general thing to go through. That should be done in every case. We should see what's appropriate for this person and the judge should be able to vary and make that decision. Um, so to me, I do think it's a B. I think it's really good, but I do think there's room for improvement. Dirty Rick, if she's answering the DMs on Instagram, she got back to me in like two minutes. She's killing it. Yep, that was probably her. I do answer some, but that was probably most likely her. Um, do you think Clarence Thomas should retire? No. <laughs> it doesn't work that yeah, way. Yeah, they never, they never retire um, is what it feels like. Uh, Mr. Turn of the party, what is your opinion on an ADA resigning because the DA doesn't want to proceed with a case? Do you really believe no one is above the law? All right. I think I understand that. What is your opinion that an assistant district attorney right. resigns because the district attorney doesn't want to proceed on the case? It doesn't happen all. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's your boss and you know, they make the call. But you at the end of the day, the it's your prerogative. You want to quit. Sure. You want to quit, you can quit. So I, I don't, I don't have a negative opinion to that. I, I think though. If you're a PD, which we talk about this in the interview with Chris Vera, so stick around and you can hear from a public defender, which is a government lawyer who doesn't get to choose her cases, hear what she has to say. But in my opinion, if you sign up to work at the, the district attorney's office or state attorney's office or U.S. attorney's office or public defender's office, you're signing up to take the cases that are assigned to you. And you realize you can't change the laws of the land mm -hmm. and you have a boss that will make those decisions because it really ultimately comes back on them. Yeah. It's just like people that work for us. If we tell them to run the ball in the case and they don't want to, well, they signed up to work here. Now we take into account all the lawyers yeah. feelings and we say, let's talk about it. Why don't you want to? And we may not end up moving forward on it if they make a good point. But, but at the end of the day, if your boss tells you to run the ball in the case and you don't want to, your options are to do what they say or to quit. Sure. And those are really your, your options. And now realize Peter's right on this. If you let's just give you the best example I can think of off the top of my head. If you're a prosecutor and you just don't believe in the death penalty, they're not going to put you in the death penalty, you know, murder trial division. They're going to put you somewhere else. Do you believe ever, uh, no one is above the law? Do I believe that no one is above the law? No, I don't believe that. I think for the most part in the, uh, the, 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 the United States. The and the Bushes and the, I mean, they're pretty much above the law. Yeah, but even then... It, is if you're asking me, are there people that get away with things that normal people wouldn't get away with? Absolutely, oh, that yeah. happens every day. If you're telling me, is there someone that can walk, walk through, you know, uh, New York, Manhattan, and start shooting people with impunity? No, I don't believe that's the case. I believe there there can come a point where you have, you know, broken uh, the camel's back and you're going to be accountable to the law. Yeah, I mean, yes, but I definitely think there are people that are above the law. Uh, this is a good question here, <clears throat> ugly kid Joe. If federal cases have a 98% conviction rate, there's only, the only realistic option is taking a plea bargain because Pete said federal is where you get the best shape, right? Yep. So while that's a yes, what you don't see and hear about in the stats is 
the people that get investigated by the feds and no charges ever come. And that's part of what Pete's talking about getting a fair shake is you have no idea how many more federal cases we take in what we call in a pre-indictment phase. We go to the prosecutor's office. We look through the evidence with them. We talk to FBI agents. We talk to assistant U.S. attorneys. We explain to them why they either shouldn't charge this person or should charge them with this crime instead of that crime because this crime's not as bad. And then we work out a plea deal immediately right there when they're charged and we turn them in and they do their time or they get probation or whatever it is. That's why it's a more fair system in our opinion. Yes, if you're going to trial, you're likely going to lose. Now, we've won plenty of federal trials. I don't feel like our conviction rate is much worse in federal court personally, but we're a lower volume criminal practice. Like if I think about, I feel like I've won as many federal criminal defense cases as I have state criminal defense cases, taking out my prosecutor state cases, which was all victories um, because it's just so much easier because you get to choose what you're going to do. You know, I mean, think about it. You got to choose every case you were going to prosecute. You should win anyways. um, So I think that's what you're talking about really with it being fair is they're level headed in how they do their investigations. A lot of times charges don't even come or charges get dropped. Sure. And you're talking about a, 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 how do I say this? The people in the federal system are just really, really sharp. There are no amateurs. There is no, I, this is my first year out of law school or I just, this is my first case in federal court. Everybody, to include the prosecutors, the agents, everybody is seasoned and experienced. All right, Steve Sheep. How do you deal with winning when your client was heinous and you know he's guilty? That is not the standard, my friend. Um, From a criminal perspective, your job is to ensure that the prosecutor does their job and prove your client's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. If the prosecutor can't prove the charge beyond a reasonable doubt, that's the standard. I don't ask the client, did you do it? I don't ask, you know, clients to give me information. Yeah, it's very unlikely that that. we win a case and we know the client's guilty. Um, Do we think some of our clients are bad people? Yes. Um, But, you know, I I don't know. I feel like, I don't feel like I've ever won a case where I was like, wow, I just tricked the prosecutor and got this murderer off when he definitely should have gotten convicted. That's never happened. When we win cases... Every case I've won that's, that as a criminal defense attorney, I feel like the prosecutor absolutely it was nowhere near proving that case beyond a reasonable doubt. So, and that's the standard and that's how it has to be. Um, so in my opinion, I, I don't really think that I've had this situation come up um, in the way that you're asking it. Uh, Bodhi, this is going to be our last question because we have to get out of here before five o'clock. What is the difference between charge, a charge and being charged? So if they're investigating you for a charge, they can show us that criminal statute and say, this is what we think the evidence proves. But we can talk to them and say, either no, he didn't do it, or actually it fits better into this charge. And then once they actually file those charges against you, they're on your record forever. Just being investigated doesn't go on your record, but being charged and and arrested and indicted, that is kind of the next step. And now the criminal process officially is starting. You have rights. They have responsibilities. All the rules start coming into play there because when it's pre-indictment, not a lot of rules. Kind of like a pre-suit civil case is not a lot of rules. So that's kind of the difference between the pre-charge and the charge phase. Anything you want to add to that? That sounds good to me. All right. All right. Since Mr. Turn Up the Party added one more, is there a crime other than murder that you think the death penalty is warranted for sexual assault on a child? Um, Yeah, I think there's some capital sexual battery cases that I agree that the death penalty is warranted. And in Florida, at least, there actually are capital child sex cases, but the case law has basically indicated that there are no longer death penalty cases. They're life without the possibility of parole. All right. That's it for us, guys. Thanks for joining us on this week's Case by Case. Hop over now to the interview with Crystal Vera. Starts at 5 o'clock, which is literally in two minutes. Don't forget to like this video on your way out and subscribe to our page if you haven't already. This was fun, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you like this content, please share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to our page and like our videos. If you want some interaction, get in the comments and we'll be sure to get back to you. If you want to know any more information about our firm or this page, you can find out in the description or visit tragoslaw.com. We post multiple times throughout the week, so make sure you hit that bell so you can get the notification and not miss out on the next episode.